Hello, it's Debbie Gilbert from the Business Awards Show, and I'm also the owner of the Best Business Women Awards. And today I am joined by Babs Jameson from Jameson Law. And Babs has a, an amazing law firm that she has built online. So completely mm -hmm. pandemic proof, which is great. So she's dealing with people mm -hmm. from all over the UK. Um, she is a business lawyer. She's business and contracts and brand protection. So welcome, Babs, to the Business Awards Show. Thank you so much, Debbie. Thanks for having me. I'm delighted to be here. So tell us um, a bit about your journey as a solicitor and how you came up, came to set up um, Jameson Law. Um, so I probably had, well, I probably started out quite similar to other lawyers and then kind of went off track fairly, fairly soon. I think I've always probably been a bit different in my profession, um, which is probably where I've, why I've ended up where I am now. Um, so I originally kind of did the whole, do your law degree, do your, do your postgrad, go and sit and um, do your training contract with like a big firm. So I trained with one of the big commercial firms in Scotland, one of the big four. Um, I qualified into there and then after about a year or so post-qualification, I moved in-house to an investment management firm. So I was kind of doing all your in-house legal stuff. So things like contracts, corporate work, investment work, that kind of stuff. Um, I was there for a few years. I actually loved that job. That was probably my favorite proper job that I ever had. Um, I, I left that simply because it was a really flat structure. So there wasn't really anywhere to move to. Um, but it's one of those ones where you were like, oh, quite sad to go. Um, but I left that one and I, I tried my hand back at private practice for a while, but it, it kind of just wasn't really for me. I, I, I really, I felt like the, the client, as much as they said that the client was the number one priority, I wasn't sure the client actually was the number one priority. I wasn't a big fan of a lot of the way they treated clients, particularly in terms of charging. Um, and I was kind of got that way where I think most lawyers go into it to try and make a difference and then they lose sight of that along the way um, and I kind of had one of those realizations of I'm not actually making that much of a difference here if anything I'm just helping rich people get richer to be honest and um, so I left that and um, didn't last very long when I went back to private practice um, and I started just freelancing so just doing kind of contract corporate work brand protection work for small businesses and startups just freelancing for a couple of years. And then I set up my own firm just over two years ago. And um, we actually launched February, like properly launched February, 2020. So a month before the pandemic. Um, so spent that first couple of months having an absolute meltdown, wondering what <laughs> I've done. Um, and then as you say, it's, it's been pandemic proof. We actually yeah. have grown very quickly and very well throughout the pandemic. Um, we're all online, which definitely, definitely helps. So uh, what brought you to thinking about awards as part of your marketing strategy? What was your thoughts behind that? Coming from the big law firm world, it's all about applying for awards and, and you <laughs> kind of the market, the marketing people, they're always talking about awards. And, and I guess as a, as a little one in a law firm, you don't really know what anybody's talking about. Um, but I have um, five other team members. I always get confused with the number because one's on mat leave, but <laughs> I have six team members. I have five that I'm working with at the moment. Um, and a couple of them were saying to me, oh, listen, Babs, we really think like it would be a really good idea if you could start um, or we could start like applying for awards. You know, it'd just be, you know, help us with our marketing strategy, get a bit of publicity and, and also give it kind of a little bit of credibility to, to what we're doing as well. So and because we were early stages as well, we don't really have this so much now, but at the beginning, you're really trying to convince people that you know what you're doing. Yeah, um, of course. You don't really have any social proof or anything like that. You know you know what you're doing, but trying to convince other people is a different story. Um, so we started out um, just looking around and then just kind of saw what awards were available and obviously led us to you. <laughs> and also to the Scottish Law Awards, where you won Specialist Law Firm of the Year last year. Yeah, which yeah, is so amazing. Was, oh, thanks. So that was the Scottish Prestige Awards last year, and yeah, and that's Specialist Law Firm. Yeah, which is a great accolade to have. And you got Silver Award for two categories last year. Not many people get shortlisted for two. Um, for Best Boss, which is lovely because that one is a nomination category. So that means that your team nominated you for that and that our judges thought you were worthy of being recognised as a best boss. And actually, for a new business owner, that's a good accolade to have when you're talking about recruiting new staff. 
to yeah. actually say, yeah. well, I, you know, I am a credible boss and obviously legal services. So you obviously caught the eye of our judges on that one as well, which is great. Yeah. So yeah. you've obviously only been in business now for a couple of years, but I think it's really useful for our listeners if you could share a couple of tips and things that you found that have helped you setting up your business and getting it to where it is today. Yeah, I guess hiring staff. Yeah. <laughs> I think you need to realize fairly early on that you can't do everything yourself. Um, I hired very early, very early. I, I hired when I was only a month in, but I hired part-time, like a university student who kind of fit things in around me. Um, and then one and then one of my friends. Um, both of them were kind of working, I don't know, probably four hours each a week, something like that. Um, and now they're both kind of permanent full-time staff members, but just having them on was, I mean, it grew so much quicker than, than I could have done it by myself because at, at the beginning, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to work out marketing, like trying to work out my social media, trying to do client calls, trying to win clients, trying to deal with admin, trying to service the client, get the work out, trying to do finance, like trying to do all of it. So I, I got those two people in really, really quickly and they were amazing and they helped me with the marketing and the creative stuff because it's really not my forte. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'm sure you're shocked. Um, but yeah, I mean, they helped me with all of that. And then I think I, I probably took too long to hire again, um, mostly because I am quite risk averse and I don't like to overspend. Um, but as soon as I did start hiring again, um, the business started to grow a lot quicker. Um, and I think making, making decisions with an element of risk provided it's an educated risk and, and, and knowing, I think having an appreciation for it and knowing that you need those people and that you can't do it all by yourself. Like I, I am rubbish with numbers and I am terrible at marketing. So I'm never going to be I'm never going to be able to grow a business well if I don't have people in my corner that are good at those things. So that's a big one for me. Um, our whole business has grown on social media, our entire business. So I guess tips from that perspective are, are just kind of be active all day, every day. And I know that's different from what other people say. Some people say, as long as you post three times a week, I mean, we are posting constantly and we're posting really helpful educational content. So it's not, it's very rarely is it salesy. Um, and, and we do follow it up with genuinely helpful things. So we offer free legal advice calls. They are genuinely free legal advice calls. Like if a person wants to come on and asks for a quote, we'll give them a quote. And that's how we get our clients. But we don't, we don't sell. It's not a sales call. Um, and I think that's, that's been a, a big thing as well is, is offering really valuable content in a market that doesn't give things for free um, and then and then allowing people to kind of go a little bit further than that obviously you need to protect your energy to an extent and you can't always keep giving away for free but I think that's what what grew us as, as quickly as as it as we did and as a, a business lawyer and you specialize in contracts and branding I mean what are the common mistakes that business owners are making with this stuff that unfortunately lead them down the legal route what, what are you seeing running a business without a client contract mm. that's the biggie and and that's because that's your highest risk situation and um, whether you're dealing with you know b2b if you sell b2b or you sell b2c there's things that you need to be thinking about and and i think people shy away from it for a few reasons and um, firstly because they think it's going to be really expensive which if you go to a small business lawyer it shouldn't be um, but I also think because they, they're terrified of putting down like a, a 20 pager full of legal jargon which Again, if a law firm tells you that's what it needs to be, then they're not serving you right. Um, a lot of our clients have like two to three page documents and it's written in the way that they speak. Mm -hmm. um, we see the contract as kind of an extension of the sales process. It shouldn't, you shouldn't have worked really hard to get someone over the line and then you hit them with a contract and they say, oh, that you seem like a totally different business than I thought I was contracting with. It should never happen. But what the, the problem with not having that in place is, what if someone asks for a refund? Do you have a right to say no to them? What if someone starts relying on consumer rights and saying they want pulling off periods for something you've sold? Well, if, if you don't think that applies, but you've not written that down anywhere, you just have to give them what they ask for. Um, other things like 
liability issues, you need to make sure that if you hopefully nobody gets sued, but if you do get sued, there's a cap on it. There's only certain things you can be liable for. That that's the biggie. That's the biggie. And and even from a a kind of professional cosmetic perspective, if you're trying to win bigger and better clients and you don't have a client contract, it doesn't really sell yourself as as a professional outfit. That that's the first thing. The second thing I would say is not trademarking your brand. That's a biggie. Um, I have loads of people who come to me saying, oh, I've been running my business for six years and this person's just out there copying my name. What can I do about it? Now, you can do something about it. You can send a letter and you can ask them to stop, but it's really hard to prove that you were there first. And it's really hard to prove that they pinched it from you. Whereas if you have a registered trademark, it's cut and dry. It's, you know, and, and a registered trademark costs about two to 300 quid. Mm, it's not a lot if you think about what the damage could be. And, and the worst thing is what if someone comes along, uses the same name as you, you read, uh, they register the trademark and then they force you to change. Yeah. You've been there first. Think about how much it would cost you to rebrand the thing, how much it would cost you to communicate all that to your clients, the disruption to your business. Two to 300 pounds is, is not, it's not a big expense um, and you can do it. Your, that's, that's just your filing fees. You can do a trademark yourself if you want to. Um, it's really not a big expense to protect your branding. So those are the two biggies. If you're listening to this and you haven't got contracts in place. <laughs> and also, as I found out, you need contracts in place when you lose freelancers and you need up to date ones because I had one that was quite old and I came unstuck with that myself. So Absolutely. get your contracts reviewed if you had them written quite a long time ago as well. Because yes. laws change and, you know, that's what yeah. we're paying you for your expertise. Um, so in terms of the future of Jameson Law, um, what's the plans? Tell us what you've got planned for 2022. Well, we actually launched in Ireland. When did we launch? September last year. Um, so we've been very, very steadily growing that. So this in 2022, we'll be looking to kind of move that along a lot more. Um, we, we've, we've been a lot slower in pushing than I expected to just because we got so busy on the, on the UK side. Um, but that's definitely on the agenda. We are also launching a course um, middle of February. So we have we work predominantly with small business owners and startups. But there's still an area that we can't service because they really just don't have the funds at all to, to deal with lawyers. As, as much as we, our fees are very fair and reasonable and we're always very um, transparent with them, we're still going to outprice some people. So that course is intended to be a kind of catch all. You know, if you subscribe to the course, you get everything you need, um, as well as being chatted through it all, having support through it all, um, and then the ability to ask questions weekly. So we're launching that um, third week in Feb, um, and that's available to small business owners. Um, and yeah, it'll cover off things like branding contracts, but also things like what should your website contain? What do you need to be worrying about for GDPR? Um, that kind of thing. So two biggies for 2022, dominate Ireland and launch our course. <laughs> You'll have to send me the details of the course because we can share the link with people. So I'm sure oh, amazing. Yeah, I will that. do. Thank you. Um, and awards, any awards on the agenda for this year? You're going to have a look at some others? Yeah, I, we will. We'll have, a, we'll have a scout about. I think things are starting to kind of get a bit busier with the awards scene now. So things are starting to come out. So we will have a scout about, but obviously we know exactly what one we will be applying for. <laughs> <laughs> well, Babs, thanks for joining us today. It's been lovely to talk to you. It's been a breath of fresh air, actually, in my day today. So it's been lovely <laughs> having a chat about you and your business journey. And we'll, we'll pop some details about Babs's law firm in the comments on YouTube and also on our website, The Business Awards Show. So thanks for joining us and I look forward to talking to you again soon, Babs. Take care. Thanks, Debbie, thanks.